same struggle, same fight. Haiti, Cuba, same struggle, same fight. different actions in cities around the world. The people of the world saying no to another U.S. war, imperialist war, war of mass destruction. The people of the world are a power with a voice that will come forward in ever louder waves as millions and millions gather in Venezuela to stop, to stop a U.S. provocation. Today, we have a short program here on Wall Street, center of U.S. finance capital, and our first uh, speaker, our co-chair, Lourdes Vela. All right. Make it plain. And I, I'm Sarah Flounders with International Action Center and with No War on Venezuela. Yes. No War! No War! Brothers and sisters, thank you for being here. Good afternoon. We all know that what brings us here is injustice. It didn't happen today, yesterday with Venezuela. It happened hundreds of thousands of years ago with my ancestors, the Native Americans. So we're here for not only Venezuela, but also to bring together all the different injustices all over the world, from Latin America to Puerto Rico to Palestine, Syria, and Libya. Every media outlet points to the same picture. Juan Guaido as the self-elected president of Venezuela. They've weaponized aid to hold Maduro hostage. I want to let you know what no other media outlet is talking about, and that's the sanctions imposed on Venezuela, and that is the reason why it is impoverished. Citibank closed bank accounts in Venezuela and blocked the transfer of 300000 for a shipment of insulin. Euroclear retained $1.6 billion of money that was going for medicine. The Bank of England seized over $1 billion in gold. Cisco accounts have been frozen and not allowed out of the United States unless Guido is in power. It amounts to about $9.10 billion. Wells Fargo has withheld and canceled $7,500,000 of, of electricity that Venezuela sold to Brazil. Since May 2018, 7 million for dialysis for children and adolescents has been blocked. So don't tell us this is about humanitarian aid because you, the United States and its imperial powers, have blocked money that go to the aid to help children and families, medical, economic, Every type of money that in Venezuela has been uh, very successful in moving throughout the world through its petroleum and natural resources has been blocked. So we are here today to break that media block. Thank you very, very much for being here. Thank you, Lourdes Vela, from the Boulevard and Circle. 
Circle Bolivar. Our next speaker is Ike Mann, who is with the New York, New Jersey, Cuba Sea Coalition. Let's give it up for Mike. Hi. Thank you, Sarah. Let me start by thanking the initiators and organizers of this excellent action. IAC, UNAC, No War on Venezuela. These February 23rd action, national and international actions have become a magnet for all anti-imperialist and solidarity activists and many, many others. We are all overflowing with anger at this arrogant campaign, once again, of Yankee imperialism, which is culminating this weekend at the Colombian and Brazilian borders with Venezuela and along its Caribbean coastline. All week, we have watched this dirty Yankee scheme unfold in an attempt to create the political and logistical conditions to steamroller a right-wing military coup, which could only be extremely bloody and repressive. This would be accompanied by a direct U.S. military intervention as solicited openly by the puppet Guaido. I guess they expected the Maduro PSUV government to just surrender. I guess they expected that the Venezuelan officer corps would just crack and betray national sovereignty. I guess they just expected that the Venezuelan working class, despite a crushing capitalist economic crisis and escalating U.S. sanctions, would just not, would not mobilize and fight to defend their social conquest, their political space, and the sovereignty of Bolivarian Venezuela. We know that revolutionary Cuba is in Trump's and his gang of war criminals crosshair. They have been for a long time, the Boltons and the Abrams. We know that they all salivate at the prospect of exterminating the living example of the Cuban Revolution, the original sin of their problems in their minds. But that will never happen. All of you know revolutionary Cuba will not be intimidated. Cuban society is mobilizing this Sunday, tomorrow, to vote on a new updated constitution. At the same time, all of Cuba is mobilizing to defend peace, Venezuelan sovereignty, and the Nicolas Maduro government. Cuban diplomats in the UN are leading the fight in that body. Cuban doctors, teachers, and all volunteers on the ground in Venezuela are at their posts and mobilizing to defend Venezuelan sovereignty. Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez held a magnificent press conference answering Trump's bellicose Miami speech the other day. He called that speech a clumsy declaration of imperialist domination. Trump says, we have seen Cuba's future here in Miami. I'm quoting Bruno. He is wrong. The future of Cuba is in Cuba. With or without additional blockade measures, the future is decided by Cuban women and men. We have done so, we have built, and we will defend a socialist revolution right under their noses. Cuba, si bloqueo, no. U.S. hands off Venezuela. Hello, sisters and brothers. I'm one of the co-chairs today. My name is Teresa Gutierrez, and I represent the International Action Center but I also represent FIRE, fights for immigrants and refugees everywhere. And I just want to say that the only humanitarian crisis that we should be fighting for is the humanitarian aid that the U.S. government owes migrants around the world, especially those in the San Diego Tijuana border. And you know what? It's not humanitarian aid, it's reparations for stealing the wealth of Central America and forcing migration. <coughs> so we're here today for no, to fight for no borders, no walls, no war in Venezuela. Our next speaker, I'm very honored to announce Kamal from the 
organization December 12th that has been fighting for Venezuela for decades. Please welcome Kamal from December 12th. Oh Venezuela! Oh Venezuela! Oh Venezuela! Black power! 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 Black they try to kill off the people who will not go along with the dominating terroristic tactics. They steal your labor and your wealth in your land. And then, when you try to organize the fight back and the take back of your people and your territory, they say you're a terrorist. You're anti-democracy. That's what they say to Venezuela and Zimbabwe. They say to Venezuela, look, you're all anti-democratic because you have decided to build a society that teaches, quote, from each according to his ability, and quote, to each according to his needs. That's the kind of society that Venezuelans have chosen to develop. They want Venezuelans and the rest of the world to build a kind of society that says, quote, from each according to his thievery, and quote, to each according to his greed. I'm going to say it again. For they want the world to build the kind of society that says from each according to his thievery and to each according to his greed. That's what they want. And when you don't do that, they say you're not democratic. Well, with economic sanctions, imperialism wants to make Venezuela and Zimbabwe economies scream. They want the people in those countries to be forced to make decisions based on quote-unquote survival mode. Y'all know how people talk about, oh, I gotta eat. You okay? I gotta eat. All right? But, check this out. In 1980, in a Lancaster agreement between Zimbabwe and England, England agreed to compensate the white settler regime cousins for the African land they stole. That has not happened yet. Those people have not paid a dime to their kids and kin in Zimbabwe. Now, if they do that to their own, what do you think they're going to do to you and me? Remember what the indigenous people here said. White man speaks with forked tongue. White man speaks with forked tongue. Okay? Now, the people, these are the same people in England who are holding billions of dollars in gold that belong to the Venezuelan people. Okay? They're holding their money. It's the same thing that you guys are doing here. They're refusing to release the billions of dollars in gold that they owe the people of Venezuela. What they're saying is that they're going to steal their companies, city gold, and the rest. They're taking, they're holding on to their money, holding on to their gold. So how do you expect the people in Venezuela to survive if they don't have the means to buy medical supplies and things like that? Us here in the U.S., black people, we have not been paid a single penny for our unpaid slave labor. That was one of the foundations for the building of private individual wealth here in the U.S., not a penny. And every time we attempt to own and control our labor and the production of goods and services for ourselves, the KKK and people like that destroy our businesses, they do it economically, they burn the churches down, close down the schools. We end up having to work two minimum wage jobs with no benefits to try to make ends meet. The rents in our neighborhoods are 50, 60 percent of our take-home pay. They use real estate developers to ethnically cleanse our neighborhoods. They use the census to divide our definition of blackness. They use the pharma and insurance companies to block single payer and development of preventative medicine. We cannot continue to go along to get along. We must use every weapon in our possession to support the Zimbabwe people's right to govern themselves the way they feel they should.
okay? We said no to war on Venezuela. End the sanctions now, because sanctions are the blame for the hardship the people are experiencing. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Sisters and brothers, my name is Frank Vergara. I'm also one of your coaches today. I want to begin by affirming that your presence today is only one of the rallies in support of Venezuela of 132 countries throughout this planet. Venezuela is not alone. We are proof, and the people of 30, 132 countries, as of last Thursday, are also rallying today to tell Venezuela that she is not alone. I represent the Pro Libertad Freedom Movement, the Socialist Front of Puerto Rico, and the National Jericho Movement because we have political prisoners of the empire. Gaydo is the son of the regime change mechanisms in Washington. He does not represent the Venezuelan people. He was partly educated in the U.S., just like all the colonial governors of Puerto Rico have been educated in American schools so that they can do the dirty work of the U.S. Empire. And we are here to tell them that you are not going to invade Venezuela like you did 117 other countries of Latin America, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Haiti, etc. No more war in Venezuela. No more war in Venezuela, let's hear it! No more war in Venezuela! Like Cuba, Venezuela is not alone and will never be alone. I also bring you greetings from the Ministerio de Solidaridad con los Pueblos of Holy Root Church. Because the people of faith in this city know what it's like to be the victims of this Trump regime and every U.S. administration. They don't have to be told about the threat against Venezuela because we are living that threat in our neighborhoods every day. Low housing, unemployment, etc. That's why we're here. Before I finish, I want each of you here who represent a different country to shout it out. Let me hear it. Puerto Rico presente. Who else is presente? Black power, sister. The people of Africa and the diaspora are here, as usual, supporting Venezuela, Cuba, and all the people's struggles. Haiti presente. Haiti presente. Dominican Republic presente. Let me hear it, sisters and brothers. And finally, Finally, let us all affirm on behalf of Venezuela, Chavez presente! Viva Chavez! Viva Chavez! Viva Chavez! Viva Chavez! Thank you, brothers and sisters. 
Sarah from the People's Power Assembly, and I would like to introduce the next speaker, Ralph Augusto Miranda from the New York Puerto Resistance. Good afternoon, my name is Rafael, and I'm representing New York Puerto Rico Resistance. We are an organization that is working to organize and mobilize Puerto Rican communities in Bushwick, Williamsburg, and Ridgewood. We stand in solidarity with the Venezuelan people today, saying no to U.S. intervention in Venezuela. And we stand with the people in Puerto Rico in saying that Puerto Rico should no longer be used as a pawn of the U.S. for intervention in Venezuela. As one of the oldest U.S. colonies, we understand perfectly well the consequences of U.S. intervention, as well as its pseudo-promises of humanitarian aid. These promises of humanitarian aid are nothing more than a Trojan horse to access our land and our resources. We know that if the U.S. really cared about humanity, they would have allowed the aid that both Venezuela and Cuba offered Puerto Rico post Maria instead of blocking it. We know that if the U.S. really cared about humanity, nearly 4,000 Puerto Ricans wouldn't have died in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. The U.S. only cares about using Puerto Rico to continue to destabilize parts of Latin America. Governor Jose Yo, as a black dog of U.S. imperialism, has called for Puerto Rico to be the headquarters for the logistical support of this pseudo government that they are trying to set up. But Puerto Ricans in the diaspora and Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico say no. Maduro has offered assistance to Puerto Rico in their fight for independence, while the President of the United States has thrown paper towels, mocked our dead, and refuses this week to meet to discuss continued aid for Puerto Rico. We know that the U.S. prioritizes nothing more than stealing our resources and land for corporate profits. We stand with the Venezuelan people in solidarity against U.S. intervention. U.S. out! Long live international solidarity! Long live international solidarity! Long live international solidarity! Thank you. I would like to introduce the next speaker, Arthur uh, D. Martinez from Bayan, USA. Warm, melting greetings, New York City! My name is Azriel D. Martinez, and I'm from Bayan, USA. We are the legal expression of the National Democratic Movement with a socialist perspective here in the United States. We advocate for the rights and welfare of all Filipino in the Philippines and abroad. Every day, 6,000 immigrants are leaving the Philippines because they um, have no food and they are leaving their land because of the lack of their own sovereignty. And just like in Venezuela, we are in solidarity of demanding that they have their own self-determination. We stand in solidarity um, for that they are demanding for what is right, that they are able to be, um, plan what they are able to do. Like um, Venezuela is backed by the USA, and like in Venezuela, the continuing fashion of dictatorship in the Philippines is being paid by our own tax dollars here in the United States. In the past year, over $200 million have been sent to the Philippines to kill um, hundreds and thousands of people. It has displaced over half a million people from their ancestral lands. And the fact that you don't even know this or see this is ridiculous. It's because of the fact that the U.S. is taking care and um, in control of the media and it's not letting us know that the, mil the millions of thousands of dollars of tax dollars are going to that. With the fact that the people here are not even be able to have decent um, homes, decent jobs, where we are being kicked out. But the thing is, what they don't know, despite the fact of the increased fashion that's going on in the Philippines and in Venezuela and here in the United States, the people are fighting stronger. Today, commemorates the 33th anniversary of People Power Assembly in the Philippines where we kicked out the dictatorship of Marcos in the Philippines. And we will continue to doing that. The movement has been 50 years strong, the revolution. There's a revolutionary government in the Philippines that is continuously fighting the reactionary forces being backed by U.S. tax dollars. And we can do that here in the U.S. We can do that here in Venezuela as well. So, if you are here today in response to Solidarity for Venezuela, I 
I urge you to also join us in April, where we will be going marching to D.C. and demanding that the U.S. tax dollars that are going to the United States go back to the people here, where we can have affordable health care, homes, and decent jobs that we are able to have our basic needs met. So from Venezuela to the Philippines, stop the U.S. war machine! From Venezuela to the Philippines, stop the U.S. war machine! Thank you. Stop the U.S. war machine! Stop the U.S. war machine! U.S. out of the Philippines! Woo! Susie's a brother, isn't it great? There's a new anti-war movement in town! We're here to tell Wall Street, it's not your land, it's not your soil. You is hands off Venezuelan oil. And how great that the anti-war movement is back on the streets again. All right, our next speaker, I'm very proud to announce he is my comrade and my brother, Larry Holmes from Workers' World Party. Thank you, Teresa. I'm not sure why we picked the 23rd. Maybe it's because of one month after the attempted coup. But comrades, this is the right day to be out here and around the world. Because we are responding in time to a U.S.-backed, attempted, violent counter-revolution on the borders of Venezuela happening today. And it's not going to work. We want to ask the bourgeois media, how come you don't have the guts to show the people who are demonstrating in support of the Bolivarian Revolution? Maybe our next demonstration, number one, shouldn't be so peaceful. Number two, should be in front of CNN. We're clear. Trump, who owns this building behind us, he doesn't care whether the people of Venezuela have no food. He doesn't care if they have no medicine. They can go to hell as far as this racist billionaire is concerned. You want to know what he thinks about brown people? Go to the Mexican border. That's what you'll find out what he really thinks of black and brown people south of the border. It's important that we're here too. The symbolism is right on. What the people of Venezuela have been doing for 20 years now is rebelling against the dictatorship of the rich. They've been telling us around the world, we don't care. We will not be dictated to by Wall Street. Wall Street will not determine our future. We will do it. And in that sense, they are part of the global struggle, the history of struggle against the rich. From Palestine, everywhere, South Africa, Queens, right here, they're part of that struggle. So we hear about Venezuela, but really it's about all poor and working and oppressed people, no matter where they are, no matter what language they speak. I just want to wind up by quoting the words of Comrade Fidel. Socialism or death. Socialism or death. Thank you. I just have a quick announcement. Everyone who's scheduled to speak, can you please come to the front where the stage is? Por favor, todas las personas que están programadas a llevar, hablar, por favor, vengan aquí en el stage. Gracias. Okay. How do you feel about the Cuban Revolution? Woo! Oh, come on. Okay. How do you feel about the Cuban Revolution? Woo! Of America and also representing IFCO, 
U.S. Caravan Friendship with the Cuban people, Jaime Mendieta. Well, first of all, we have to thank the organizers of No War on Venezuela. It turned out to be a fabulous event. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'll say, uh, I heard... Closer to you, closer! Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Is this a little better? Yeah! Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, I have a statement from Casa de las Américas here. And thought... Huh? Oh, this way. Oh, okay. Now, uh, now I think we have it. Well, uh, Cuba reiterates its firm solidarity with the uh, uh, constitutional president uh, Nicolas Maduro and the Bolivarian Chavista uh, Republic of Venezuela and the Caribbean Zone of Peace. A good part of the Cuban community in the United States supports uh, President uh, Nicolas Maduro and the Bolivarian Revolution. And uh, Casa de las Americas is one of the groups, but the, uh, the main supporters in Miami, the alliance, the, the, the uh, Alancia uh, Martiana has several demonstrations in support of Maduro and the Bolivarian Revolution. You would never know this from the capitalist media. The U.S. is putting enormous pressure on the United Nations Security Council to force uh, adoption of a resolution that would serve as a prelude to a humanitarian intervention. The U.S. government is still putting brutal pressure on countries to force recognition of the puppet president who calls for a military invasion of his own country. We are witnessing the fabrication of a humanitarian pretext for war. The deadline has been set to force entry of humanitarian aid with the use of force. As we have seen in Libya, Exclusive aerial zones, protection of civilians, establishment of, uh, of humanitarian corridors, the United Nations authorization for the use of war. This is what they're really after. Then they feel they can go ahead. The talk, the talk in U.S. circles has been about humanitarian aid lasting uh, even uh, several months or even years. As long as reconstruction lasts, remember reconstruction. Reconstruction contracts have been waived in front of governments as bribes to support in Afghanistan, as it was done in Afghanistan and Iraq. Looks like humanitarian. Looks like humanitarian aid and the destruction of infrastructure go hand in hand. Even if military intervention doesn't happen now. We have to remember, it's just the beginning. The pressure at the UN will escalate. The uh, free press media will go into an even more warmongering um, a la Iraq. The psychological warfare that is aimed at creating now the uh, Passes for Peace, which is a uh, group that really knows about caravans. They've had countless caravans going to Central America, to uh, um, Cuba. I've personally been on, on six or seven of those caravans. I've been to one to Chiapas. These caravans bring aid. They bring solidarity. Aid, solid, well, it's mainly solidarity and love that they bring to on their caravans. Uh, so, so, uh, Okay, well, I have to get up. Bye. Oh. <laughs> hey, hands off, Venezuela! 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 Hi, everyone. The next speaker on the list is Mary Christopher from the People's NPA. I'm from the people's MTA. We are fighting for safe, accessible subways with elevators. 
Now you may ask yourself, why is somebody talking about subways when we're fighting a war against against the war in Venezuela? It has everything to do with it. If the U.S. starts a war with Venezuela, all the resources will be diverted to the war effort, and we need the resources here in our city. We have a crumbling infrastructure. We just have a few elevators. Recently, a young woman fell down the stairs and to her death because there was no elevator. Had there been an elevator, she might be alive today. We also fight for the bus drivers and the transit workers. Maduro is the bus driver. We fight for Maduro. We stand with Maduro. There's going to be a hearing Monday, the 25th at 10 o'clock, that's the day after tomorrow, down at 2 Broadway to fight against the fare increase that the banks are demanding from the ridership of the subway. So we encourage everyone to come next Monday to 2 Broadway. And meantime, no to war with Venezuela, down with Trump, down with the and up with Maduro. Okay, thank you. Money for elevators, not for war! All right, I'm very excited to announce our next speaker, Lorraine Liano, is working 24-7 for the Puerto Rican people. Talk to action for Puerto Rico and, and other groups. Please welcome Sister Lorraine. Buenos días, compañeros y compañeras. Un saludo fraternal de la comunidad puertorriqueña, el Frente Independentista Boricua, y también a call to action on Puerto Rico. This is a greeting to everyone here from el Frente Independentista Puertorriqueño Boricua and a call to action on Puerto Rico. I am wearing the shirt and proudly of Lolita Lebron. This is a hundred years of Lolita Lebron going in in March of 1954 and saw the Congress saying, Yo vine aquí para morir para mi patria. We have been a colonized, <clears throat> we have been a colonized country for 120 years and 500 years, including the Spanish. What I'd like to highlight, because a lot of my colleagues already spoke, is the environmental catastrophe that is going on in Puerto Rico right now. We have Penuelas and Guayama. There are toxic carbon ashes that are causing people to die of these things of cancer. There is also the closing of schools all over the island. More than a third of the schools have been closed on the island. And when I make the parallel to Venezuela and our brothers and sisters that are offering free education, that are offering university education, when the University of Puerto Rico is being dismantled and the students are in the streets fighting to have education in their country. Meanwhile, the investors are coming in and taking a land grab. They are destroying the natural resources of the country. They are selling the natural resources of the country. And I want to remind people that the leadership of Puerto Rican movement has always been La Mujer Puerto Riqueña. This has always been the leadership of my movement. And I want to make a shout out to Marcela Martinez from the Federation of Teachers and Jocelyn from Frente Socialista y Se Acabaron Las Promesas who are leading this fight in our country, okay? And also I want to recognize in Venezuela all the things that are going on for El Pueblo and the sanctions of the United States and U.S. imperialism is what's preventing people from having access to the things that they need. So nosotros vamos a decir que nosotros estamos aquí presentes con el pueblo venezolano. And I would like everybody to say, Lolita vive, la lucha sigue. Lolita vive, la lucha sigue. Lolita vive, la lucha sigue. Muchas gracias y que sucede con el pueblo. One more thing, September 21st, we'll be having a march and we invite everyone here 
to be with us for the independence of Puerto Rico. Please visit our page, A Call to Action on Puerto Rico, and El Frente Independentista Boricua. Thank you so much. How's everyone doing? Great! We're going to be marching later, so is everyone ready? Okay, with that said, I'm going to introduce the next speaker, Jessica Schwartz from the Committee to Stop FBI Repression. For years, the people of Venezuela have suffered immensely because of the incessant meddling by the United States in their affairs including sanctions, spreading propaganda in order to empower a violent right-wing opposition, and attempted coups, all because Venezuela has dared to democratically elect a socialist bus driver as their leader. Me yeah, meanwhile, right here in the United States, the United States President Trump has continued to attack all oppressed people, including immigrants and refugees from countries victimized by U.S. foreign policy, much like Venezuela. And the U.S. war machine claims Venezuelans don't have the right to free speech. Meanwhile, right here in the belly of the beast, the New York Police Department, through their strategic response group, consistently arrests and targets activists for speaking out against our own government. Would you say we have freedom of speech here? No. Exactly. So as an organization that cares about political repression, the Committee to Stop FBI Repression of New York City unequivocally supports Venezuela and will continue to fight back against the U.S. imperialist government that targets activists here as well as people abroad. Mom, live international solidarity! Mom, live international solidarity! Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, the next speaker is Jill Jamison from the U.S. Peace Council. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have only two minutes. I want to just say a couple of things. One, there are some people in our anti-war movement who still have trouble with the concept of imperialism, believe it or not. Well, if you want a primer on imperialism, you just have to look at what the monsters who run the U.S. government are doing in Venezuela. Trump. Pence, Pompeo, Abrams, Bolton, and the like. One, they create hardship in Venezuela with economic warfare. Then they blame the Maduro government for the hardship. Then they create a puppet government by phone call with a CIA pipsqueak named Juan Guaido. And then he calls on Q for U international intervention and international humanitarian aid. And then they create, at the border, an armed convoy to bring the aid over the border. And they televise it. And it's happening now, as we speak. We cannot know how all this will end. Will it be just bluster and provocations and threats? Or will it go to all-out armed conflict? That evil zombie from the 1980s, Elliot Abrams is back in the picture. He's on the border with Colombia, supervising the U.S. provocations. If the war criminals running U.S. foreign policy are crazy enough to launch an all-out war, I predict it will not be a short war. And in that case, if it comes to war, we have to have a different kind of anti-war movement, and we have to have a lot bolder tactics and a lot bolder strategies. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Our job now is to prevent the invasion. Enough said. Hands off, Venezuela.
the Honduran activists here in New York City, Victor. Thank you, thank you. Um, I just got, I'm going to be really brief. Um, I just got one question. Uh, Mr. Trump, do you really want to help the Venezuelan people? Stop the economic blockade against Venezuelan people. You really want it? Humanitarian aid? There is Honduras. They really need humanitarian aid. There is Haiti. Colombia. They really need humanitarian aid. There's Colombia, right next to Venezuela, Cucuta. They really need humanitarian aid. Okay? Hands up Venezuela. Hands up Venezuela. Hands up Venezuela. Thank you. So, sisters and brothers, there are now 150 cities across the world that are marching to demand hands on Venezuela. And right now, right now we are being told by some of the activists that the Guardian newspaper has published that there are crashes on the border right now. So it shows how important our struggle is, and it shows that we've got to keep fighting after tomorrow and make it 300 cities next time because we want no more in Venezuela. No more in Venezuela. Our next speaker is uh, Sophia from NYU, student from Justice with Palestine. Hello, I am a student organizer from NYU, student for Justice in Palestine, and Jewish Voice for Peace. Um, as the U.S. prepares to intervene in Venezuela, it has never been more vital that we speak out and act against in U.S. imperialism and counter the false narrative that they're building to justify intervention. The White House can say as many times as they want that they're interested in preserving democracy in Venezuela, that they want to bring freedom to Venezuela, but we know that this is false. This is another blatant attempt to further U.S. imperialist and capitalist interests. In the past half century, the U.S. has consistently done the same thing, the same exact thing, claiming to care about freedom for Latin America while overthrowing democratically elected leaders and aiding rightly the paramilitary. The myth that the U.S. that the White House is creating to justify the intervention in Venezuela using puppets like Guaido to make themselves look more credible is just that. It's a myth. And we have the entire history of U.S. empires to prove that. How many times has the U.S. demonized leaders in Latin America, revolutionary organizations in Indochina and Africa, any exploited people fighting back against colonial and imperial forces? How many times has the U.S. told us that they were saving democracy in Latin America while destroying it in a stolen fashion, who tortured and killed thousands of people? The U.S. does not want democracy in Venezuela. They want Venezuela's resources, and they want to maintain U.S. hegemony abroad. They are threatened by Venezuela's movements towards nationalizing industries, just, what, just like they were threatened by Chile's movements towards nationalization under Salvador Allende before the U.S.-backed coup that resulted in a military dictatorship. The United States is afraid. More and more congressmen, White House officials, even Trump, they're talking about the so-called threat of socialism. They're going back to the same rhetoric that they used during the Red Scare in the 50s and in the 20s after the first socialist revolution. They're worried about growing socialist movements across the world, and they're worried, they're afraid of what we can do if we work together collectively towards liberation. They're afraid of what we can do if instead of believing the narrative that Venezuela and other countries who have borne the brunt of imperial aggression and violence are our enemies, and instead if we stand in solidarity with them in the fight against capital and empire. Thank you. Solidarity from Venezuela to Palestine. Thank you, thank you. The next speaker is Tim Hyde. He represents the Haiti Coalition. Thank you. I represent the Haiti Liberté as well. And sisters and brothers, there's a two, there are two revolutions going on in Latin America today. The first is a fake one, a manufactured one, a counter-revolution, that is in Venezuela. The real revolution is happening in Haiti. Right now, as we speak, people are in the streets. Haiti is 
always been a fountain of revolutions. It was the first revolution of Latin America, the first independent nation of Latin America, the first black republic. It was the Haitians who gave Bowie Bar the guns, the boats, the printing presses, the soldiers to liberate the continent. If you look in the flag of Venezuela, that's the Haitian flag. The flag you see on the dozens of Haitians wearing it and holding it here was the flag that is in the, most of the countries of northern South America. Haiti was also the first revolution to start the pink tide. They all followed the example set in Haiti in 1990 with Chavez and Morales and Correa. And today, once again, the Haitians are standing up as the U.S. is trying to claw back nations in Latin America from Brazil to Argentina to Chile to Ecuador even. But the Haitians are saying no, they are standing up. And it's ironic that the sanctions that the Trump administration put on Venezuela is the trigger for the revolution today because what they did was they stopped the four billion dollar solidarity fund that Venezuela was providing to Haiti. That has been stopped and the Haitian people are saying we cannot continue anymore. We are rising up. We're meeting here on Wall Street. This was the first wall they built here to wall out the pirates, the thieves who were stealing the land, the natural resources, the wealth. And now they've extended that wall to the Mexican border, also stolen land. So today, let's support the people rising up against the pirates, against the thieves, against the imperialists. Run with Haiti, run with Venezuela. Of slaves and indigenous people. 
be marching in a couple of minutes. We only have a few more speakers. Sisters and brothers, we're soon going to be marching up Wall Street. And this today is one action of 150 global actions around the world. Same with one voice, no war on Venezuela. And this is not the first war. Milos Rekovic is our next speaker talking about the U.S. war in Yugoslavia. Let's not forget that one. It's been endless U.S. wars. Milos Rekovic. Hi, sisters and brothers. I'm from Serbia, ex-Yugoslavia, and I strongly support President Maduro and Venezuela. I also am happy to report that even the current government of Serbia supports President Maduro and Venezuela. They have renewed their collaboration actually a couple of days ago and American ambassador to Belgrade criticized Serbia for doing this and he said you're on the wrong side of history. Well, the Serbian foreign minister responded the United States is on the wrong side of history. And he also added that the United States is the wrong side of history for separating Kosovo from Serbia. Next month is going to be 20 years of the bombing of Yugoslavia. Everything that is happening with other countries happened with Serbia. First comes demonization of the people and the leaders and then come the sanctions, and if it doesn't work, then they bomb the country. So please, on the 24th of March, we are going to mark 20 years of the bombing and protesting the NATO in front of the UN. Also, there is a big uh, national uh, anti-NATO uh, protest in Washington, D.C. on uh, March 30th. Please be there. NATO is the police of the world, and this is a good crowd to come there. Long live Venezuela, long live President Maduro. He should fight with all means necessary to defend his country. Hi everyone, the next speaker is Vomit Azad from the Coalition Against U.S. Foreign Military Bases. Thank you. Dear friends, this is the most important time in terms of bringing all of the peace forces together to stop this madness. They are going on a rampage throughout the world. You remember, they started with Afghanistan, went through Iraq, through Libya, Syria, and now Venezuela. This is imperialism disguising as humanitarian movement. This is humanitarian imperialism, and we have to stop that. Has nothing to do with the leaders, has nothing to do with the government in power. It is the system that's doing this. And we have to oppose that. Yes. Look at what they left in their wake in those countries, in Iraq, in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Yugoslavia. They claim the same things. We are going in there to help the people. You remember they went into Afghanistan to save the women of Afghanistan? Well, this is the same trick all over again. And again, they say we want to send humanitarian aid. Why? They have been declaring war, economic war, on Venezuela for so many years, destroying, and then saying we come to help. This is deception, misleading, and we have to oppose that. This is time for all of us to come together. All of us. None of us alone can do it. We have to stop the system, and that's the way to do it. Thank you very much. Long live the Bolivarian Revolution of Bolivar Venezuela. Thank you. Okay, folks, we have just two or three more speakers that we're going to be marching. And I want to introduce our next activist, who is a Black Lives Matter activist here in New York City, fights the cops every single day for the People's Power Assembly. Please welcome Terry Mitchell. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So when we say Black Lives Matter, black lives we need all Black lives across.
across the African diaspora. Right. We mean the black lives in Latin America. We mean the black lives in the United States. We mean the black lives in the Caribbean. We mean the black lives in Europe and in Africa. So, I learned yesterday that there's a phrase that y'all don't use in uh, parts of Latin America, but we use it here. So when I say this, I'm saying it from a United States perspective. What's going on in Venezuela is part of a white supremacist coup. That's what I'm going to call it. Not to be divisive, it's not to destroy any coalition. That's the way that I see it. So when we say Black Lives Matter, I want us to remember the black Chavistas, the brown and indigenous Chavistas that were burned alive by these murderous mobs in Venezuela as they struggle to live a life of dignity and not be crushed under the oppression of white supremacy or however you call it in Latin America. I want us to remember and honor those people that were, died. Here we would call it a lynching. If you get a noose put around your neck and you're set on fire and burned alive, we call it lynching here. But that's literally what happened and has been happening to brown, black, and indigenous Venezuelans for the past three and four years, however long this coup, attempted coup has been going on. So I want to say hands off Venezuela and international solidarity. And when you say Black Lives Matter, we mean all black lives. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kazim from Solidarity with Iran. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to express my deep solidarity with global movement to defend Venezuela. Long live Venezuela in the struggle. Long live Madonna. I'm here to express solidarity on behalf of three important groups. Hola, House of Latin America, which was created 30 years ago in Iran. They fight us so firmly to defend Venezuela, Cuba, and all Latin America. There is a strong solidarity movement in Iran with Latin America is never where we work. Because Venezuela is in gravity center of the anti-Angelic movement right now. My Prime Minister of Venezuela in Baku, where I'm from, the United States of Iran, have a meeting in solidarity with 23rd global movement 10, 15 hours ago gave a message that Venezuela and people are staying strong but they need international solidarity. So we should keep on this movement. They're not going to stop. United States was defeated in Venetian efforts to establish a parallel reactionary government in the Venezuela. But we have to be careful because these reactionary forces in the United States are running from military action. This movement should go on and on, we should continue. Once again, on behalf of the solidarity with Iran, I express Complete solidarity with the movement. Long be Venezuela. Long be solidarity. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michaela, and I'm from the Freedom Growth Socialist Organization. Woo! Um, I know we're all antsy to march, and I'm ready to march too, because I know that all of us here not only support the Bolivarian Revolution, but we wholeheartedly support the uh, democratically elected president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro. Woo! 
the Venezuelan people. How dare you question their free will to march for someone they believe in to lead them, to lead their country. It is chauvinist for us to assume that the Venezuelan people have no free will. It is absolutely the peak of American exceptionalism. Instead, I want to focus on our own election. Our current president lost by three million votes. About three million of the popular vote and is still sitting in the Oval Office. Our own president continues to ignore the cry of suffering of the American people. Continues to ignore the black and brown lives murdered by the cops. Continues to ignore Flint that have not had clean water in three years. We cannot, we cannot point fingers when our own government is strife with injustice. So I'm here to say, Chavez, Presidente, Maduro, Presidente! Chavez, Presidente, Maduro, Presidente! from the Ecuadorian people in solidarity with Venezuela. Viva Venezuela Libre! Sabemos que esta intervención que está sucediendo en estos momentos en Venezuela es una intervención solamente por petróleo. We all know that the intervention that is taking place right now is only for the oil. Nosotros Los latinoamericanos, con los norteamericanos, tenemos que protestar en contra de toda esta mafia de los, en contra de los trabajadores. All of us, Latin Americans, African Americans, Americans in general, everyone here, we have to go against what our government is doing against Venezuela. Nosotros estamos claros que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos en unión con el imperialismo de las corporaciones norteamericanas y europeas no les interesa los gobiernos socialistas ni siquiera quieren trabajar con ellos y nos bloquean todo tipo de recursos que nosotros tenemos We are all clear on the fact that this is something that is being carried out by the corporations many American corporations but also international corporations they don't want to work with any socialist government in Latin America. They don't want to work with any socialist government around anywhere around the world. Tenemos que decirles que en Ecuador tuvimos una revolución ciudadana por 10 años. ¿Y qué hicimos en Ecuador con el comandante, con el presidente Rafael Correa? Edificamos carreteras, edificamos colegios, universidades. Edificamos centros para la salud. Todo eso en beneficio de los trabajadores. So we had a revolution in Ecuador about 12 years ago. All the gains of that revolution on the president Rafael Correa have been turned around by a, a neoliberal government imposed by the U.S. in a soft coup that did not require uh, an invasion, an armed invasion. But we're still under a neoliberal government. Thanks for listening to us. Viva Venezuela Libre! USA hands on Venezuela! USA hands on Venezuela! USA hands on Venezuela! Gracias, compañeros! All right, guys. All right, my name is Christian Valencia. I'm from NYC, Shut It Down. So first I want to say that the recent attacks on Venezuela comes right after Donald Trump says that the United States will never be a socialist nation. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they want to demoralize revolutionary forces across the world and that they're also afraid of revolution in the imperial force. They want demoralized revolutionaries of any stripe 
whether you're a socialist, whether you're an anarchist, or you're a Marxist leninist, they want you demoralized, and we have to stand against this as revolutionaries in the United States. The other thing I want to say, despite whatever contradictions may exist in Venezuela, it has been under the thumb of imperialism that prevents these contradictions from being explored, prevents the revolution from being deepened. I see the people in the crowd that say that they're anarchists. I'm an anarchist, and I'm here to stand in solidarity with Venezuela and with the Bolivarian Revolution. There's anarchists in Venezuela right now fighting against the U.S. back coup. There's anarchists in Venezuela right now putting out statements asking for international solidarity with the revolution. <coughs> Sorry about that. We have to keep on. We have to keep on showing support for revolution across the world, even if it doesn't exactly conform to what we may think our idea of revolution may be. We don't live there. We don't really have the right to tell these people what they should and shouldn't do. So I'm going to I'm going to end my speech with reading a short statement. It's on AMW English from Venezuelan anarchists who are against the coup. Okay. So the Trump regime's declaration in tandem with the Organization of American States that will reorganize the President of the National Assembly, Juan Gui recognized Juan Guayat Guaido as the rightful leader of Venezuela in his first step to war. The fascist Brazilian government's alliance with the Trump regime has emboldened the two states to act. The collapse of leftist governments in Latin America and the tentative approach towards these far-right regimes may prove divisive. Fascist forces across the world have bargained that the left is retreating, and now is an opportune time to launch an assault. Leftist regimes in Latin America are in battle, but the days of the U.S. Okay. okay. But the days when the U.S. can assert its will with impunity are over. Ensuring that these days is done is where the U.S. anarchist movement and revolutionaries in general must begin. We do not need to have any solidarity with any state government. We should not ally ourselves with state power, but we also must not sit back and watch the U.S. state attempt to colonize, dominate, or interfere in any other place in the world. Hello everyone, I am Taryn from the International Action Center. Are we ready to march? Yeah. Are we ready to march? Yeah. Why are we here on Wall Street today? We come from all different traditions, we come from all different walks of life, we come from there, socialists there, anarchists there, Democrats there, everybody is here, but we're all here on Wall Street because we know that's where the money is going. That's where the money is going. These endless wars, it's because these people need another yacht. It's because these people need a get a tear. It's because these people can't stop with their profit seeking until we're all dead. Until we're all dead. And we're here because we know that Venezuela is an important component in global revolution, in global liberation from all people. And that's why we're here, to say where is their money? Give them their money back. You owe them more. You owe them reparations. You owe everyone from every movement in the global south reparations now. And this is where they're going to come and get it. This is where we're going to come and get it. So today, we've had a great rally. We're going to start marching soon. But we have to be ready. We have to stand strong together. We have to stay in touch and we have to keep organizing. Because this is just day one. This is just day one of Global Fight Back for Venezuela. We need to be ready to bring it up a notch. We need to be ready to take direct action to stop this war machine. Because I've lived my whole life seeing war after war after war all over the world, people dying. And I'm sick of it. I'm 34 years old. I don't want to be 74 years old standing here saying the same shit. So we need to kick it up a notch. We need to be ready to fight for Venezuela. We need to be ready to defend the Bolivarian Revolution. So let's march. March! March! Follow the banner! The banner is coming down! We are walking towards Wall Street! We are walking towards where these pigs are keeping the Venezuelans money! March this way! One moment and we are going to have the banner in the front! Please follow the banner! Please follow the banner and stay tight.
Venezuela. No more lies! 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 No more lies!